on the outside. 100 grand on the line. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it is showtime. And Moyer's going to grab the lead at a turn number one. O'Neill can ride in front of Carrier. Carrier tries to recapture the wheel. He gets it back down the back straight to Whippin' and he lost three spots. It's Moyer, Van Wormer, O'Neill, Bloomquist, Satterley into turn three, Dustin. At the end of lap number one, Billy Moyer going to be leading the field off turn number four, side by side for second. O'Neill has it ahead of Jeep Van Warmer. Scott Bloomquist down on the bottom as well. Bloomquist trying to work his way ahead of Jeep Van Warmer. Can't get the job done. Billy Moyer stretching out his advantage early in this one, though, but three cars battling for the second spot. They come across to complete lap number two. Well, Billy Moyer's won this race. Of course, he won the World 100 six times. He's won this race twice in a variety of chassis, but never in the Moyer the extreme Moyer extreme by Longhorn though. But meanwhile, down the back straightaway, Bloomquist on the bottom of an other side by side, off a of turn four. Bloomquist trying to become the first back-to-back -back winner. He goes to second. Cars using every inch of this half-mile racetrack with 24 degrees of banking in the corners, eight degrees of banking on the straightaways. They're high, low, and everywhere in between. And right now, they're all chasing Billy Moyer as he comes by to complete lap number four. Scott Bloomquist, though, in second, trying to close the gap this time by. As we've got a car going out of the race for the first time, is that Darrell Lanigan? I believe that's Daryl Lanigan. Am I right, Dustin Jarrett? It is Daryl Lanigan slowing on the back straight away. Makes the hard left-hand turn into the infield pit area. That is a tough, tough break for the Patriarcha Club 29. He is out of the race, but back up front. They're side-by-side -side for the lead. Scott Bloomquist has reeled in your race leader, Billy Moyer. They're wheel-to-wheel -wheel up front at Eldora. They are side-by-side -side of a turn four. And new leader is Zero. Zero out in front. Bloomquist takes the lead on lap 12. Down the back straightaway, Moyer will fight back. Another half a lap here, they'll be in heavy traffic. Two of the all-time greats, wheel to wheel at the Big E, Dustin. Eddie Carrier right there closing in on him. He sits in the third spot, Don O'Neill fourth. Top four cars all within half a straightaway of each other. Carrier may not be done yet. He momentarily peeks down to the inside of Billy Moyer. Can't get the job done. Lead trio, lead quadrant closing in quickly on the back of the field, James. 13, check that. Make it 14 laps going up on the Coca-Cola scoreboard. Maybe I should have stuck with him as my original pick. Here we go. Carrier goes to second. And a Carrier Jr. to second. Remember, he dropped back several cars on that start as they dive into three. Carrier to second. Moyer. We have four cars for the lead in Eldora, Dustin. Good race up front in this one. Eddie Carrier Jr., could you imagine if he won this race, they'd be dancing in the streets of Salt Rock, West Virginia, because Eddie Carrier is right there knocking on the back door. Moyer is there. O'Neill is there. Good race up front in the 20th annual Dirt Late Model Dream. They trail Scott Bloomquist by inches. Eddie Carrier Jr., a native of Bergen, Kentucky, moved to Eastern Kentucky when he was a teenager. Now living in Salt Rock, West Virginia, as he goes for the lead down the back straightaway. Carrier and Bloomquist door to door at three. Could we have a new leader? Our third different leader that early about a dream is Eddie Carrier Jr. They call him Little Eddie. There's nothing little about him, though. Standing about six foot five, he's standing tall right now in the dirt late model dream. Wow, everybody catch their breath. There will be better days for Ryan Gustin trying to unlap himself out there. As a matter of fact, 32 complete. Carrier, the third different leader, the 20th dirt lane on a dream for $100,000. Watch the triple seven. Landers will slide up the track. Landers has a run. Jared Landers goes to fifth at Eldora. Here comes Rick Eckert. He's rolling into three. Matt Miller also getting a run in the three car. Matt Miller worked his way up from the 18th starting spot side by side for the lead as Scott Bloomquist rolls to the outside of Eddie Carrier Jr. battling for the top spot. Eddie Carrier Jr. had a comfortable lead in traffic, but it's going away now. Bloomquist back in front. Moyer and O'Neill go side by side. Landers and Saturday side by side. Off a turn four at the line. It's Bloomquist in front of Eldora. Still side by side for the third spot, side by side for fifth as well. Great racing throughout the field. Matt Miller, again, he's worked his way from 18th starting position. He's now up into the seventh spot. Keep your eyes on the purple number three. Up front, though, still wheel to wheel for the lead. Carrier on the bottom, Bloomquist on the top. Don O'Neill and Billy Moyer, they've run side by side about the whole race. And side by side, Saturday and Landers. Side by side, Van Warber and Miller, are you kidding me? Carrier off the corner down to the inside. Can't quite get it done that time by. Carrier chopping away, 
trying to work that 28 car back up into the lead. Bloomquist, though, with a little better run that time, coming off the second corner. Then he's had the last few laps. He's able to pull back ahead just ever so slightly. Don O'Neill right there as well. Here comes Carrier, wheel to wheel at the line. Bloomquist, though, pulls back ahead, 44 laps complete. Out in turn number two, Scott Bloomquist leads in a Carrier Jr. Carrier will pick up the run again down the back straightaway. Don O'Neill close third, fourth, Billy Moyer, fifth, Greg Satterley. Out of turn four, Eddie Carrier Jr. Bloomquist maintains the lead off the of four. In a turn number one, the Durham power plant under that sweet Bloomquist. Carl Grover, they build their own engines out of West Virginia. And Carrier, Carrier, the only driver there in that top four that has never won the Dirt Lane Wanted Dream. As you mentioned earlier, he's been second in the World 100. Came oh so close a couple years ago, battling Jimmy Owens. Thought about a last lap slide job, couldn't quite get it done. This is different, an $80,000 difference between first and second. Here tonight, what do you do if you're running second on the last lap? Carriers right there within striking distance. We're almost to the halfway point. This time by 47 laps complete for $100,000. Scott Bloomquist had a tear two. He's won it six times. No driver's ever won it back to back. He came with a victory a year ago. As he comes into turn number four, his crew chief, Matt Salmons, came on board last year as they go into turn number one. O'Neill closing on Carrier, Moyer, Sandley. McDowell getting him going here late in the 117M, just past the halfway mark. Dale McDowell, Mc yes. Dale McDowell started 22nd, and he's worked his way into seventh, and he's battling for six. Could Dale McDowell be the unheralded hero of this year's Dirt Late Model Dream? He has got that 17M glued lower than anybody on this racetrack. Into turn number one, they're side by side there, McDowell Landers. Davenport now, Jonathan gets a run down the back straight away. Davenport up to eighth. Meanwhile, good battle right there between Saturday and McDowell. They're three wide, three wide, McDowell on the bottom. He'll pass all of them. Dale McDowell from 22nd to fifth in just one caution so far. 53 laps in. Bloomquist leads by about three car lengths over Eddie Carrier Jr. It's two car lengths back to Don O'Neill. Here comes Jonathan Davenport with a power move. A power move. He went from the bottom to the top and passed Satterley and Landers. Jonathan Davenport from 21st to 6th. Superman is flying down the back straight away. The fastest car on the racetrack. Who's going to hold back Superman, Dustin? Only Kryptonite can hold Superman back. And right now, I don't see any of it on the speedway. Three wide back there coming off turn number two. Jonathan Davenport trying to thread the needle. Unbelievable. Can he get the job done? JD trying to work on the outside. There's no room. He slid underneath this fuel cell. They're three wide. McDowell Moyer, he slid. The nose was under the fuel cell of Billy Moyer on the front stretch. Jonathan Davenport, are you kidding me? Uh, he continues to hit the wall. He's ripped part of the right rear off of that car. We'll see if he's able to hang on. While this has been going on, Scott Bloomquist doing what Bloomquist does best in the second half of the race. He's pulled ahead of the race leaders in trouble and turns three and four, James. And he gets it to O'Neill. The caution is out. The caution is out. He got it on the side of O'Neill. Oh, my goodness. Over to 60 Shane. down, 40 to go. 23 and 20. You better watch them. Here we go. Zero. We'll lead him in a one. James, this has been an outstanding race so far. Who's going to be the next driver to challenge up front? It might be Dale McDowell from 22nd now up to second. The Chickamauga, Georgia veteran. Would this be it? You heard him say earlier, they never really got to celebrate that World 100 win. If they won here tonight, they'd celebrate a dream win, a World 100 win, and a whole lot more. The Team Dillon 17 m may have something for the zero. Eddie Carrier's falling back to third. Billy Moyer fourth. Jared Leaders in fifth. Jimmy Owens from 25th now up to sixth. As they come out of turn four, down the main straightaway. 32 laps remain. Bloomquist, McDowell, Carrier, Moyer, and side by side for fifth. Jimmy Owens in 20. John Blankenship in 23. Here they come out of turn four at the line. That was too close to call. 20 and 23. Now Blankenship have the advantage on the bottom. Out of turn number two down the back straightaway. And John Blankenship will pull Jimmy Owens. No. Owens stays put on the outside, Dustin. 
They're wheel to wheel for that spot down the back straightaway. Last time by, the fastest car on the racetrack was your race leader, Scott Bloomquist. Had about a tenth and a half, about 15 hundredths of a second advantage over the 17 Emma Dale McDowell. Those two drivers slowly pulling away from the field. McDowell though, this last lap closing the gap on your race leader McDowell. Three tenths of a second faster, here he comes. Yeah, he's in right there, right there out of turn number two. Bloomquist shuts the door, 71 complete. 71 laps scored. As they come out of turn number four, Scott Bloomquist leads Dale McDowell for turn four. Down the back straight away, Moyer around Carrier. Billy Moyer in the third now. Billy Moyer gonna try to make a late race charge. Scott Bloomquist changed his line once again. Dale McDowell right there on the bottom. Bloomquist went from the high side to the middle of the racetrack. McDowell trying to find room on the bottom. He pulls alongside Bloomquist down the back straightaway. A battle for the lead with 25 laps to go. Dale McDowell from 22nd to the front. No! Oh, that would have been a great finish, wouldn't it? Dale McDowell, the crowd. You know they love it. And down the back straightaway, Dale McDowell and Scott Bloomquist. Two of the best of the business. Down the back straightaway to three. Moyer third. Blankenship is going to fourth. Blankenship is going to fourth, Dustin. As they come out of turn four, Blankenship works on Moyer. Blankenship up from 24th. McDowell battling for the lead from 22nd. They go side by side again off the corner. McDowell, is he able to clear him? No, he's not. They stay wheel to wheel down the back straight away. What a race in the 20th annual Dirt Late Model Dream. Dale McDowell and Scott Bloomquist. Bloomquist again leads at the strike. And they'll battle behind Randy Cordy. McDowell right now a slide advantage out of two. Down the back straight away. Dale McDowell is taking the lead, our fourth different leader. It only counts this time around, though. Out at turn four, Dale McDowell in front of Eldor in the 20th Dirt Lane Modern Dream, GJ. 21 laps to go. Dale McDowell from 22nd to the race lead. Only two cautions so far. And don't look now, but John Blankenship on the move again, James. He's alongside Billy Moyer once again in a battle for third. John Blankenship now around Moyer at the stripe. He's got third. Blankenship won here last September. The world won in and out of turn number two down the back straightaway. 20 to go. The 47-year-old veteran out of Chickamauga, Georgia. Part-time racer. Full-time promoter now to turn number two. Battle there. Blankenship on the bottom up top. Bloomquist there side by side for a second. Bloomquist gets it back. They dive into three. Blankenship now on the bottom. John Blankenship for second on the bottom as Moyer slides. Cordy Blankenship to second, Dustin. John Blankenship from 24th. Your top two cars have come from 22nd and 24th. Unbelievable. Bloomquist is now third. Moyer is fourth. Side by side for fifth, Eddie Carrier and Jimmy Owens. This time by as they come across the stripe, 16 laps to go. And Blankenship has plenty of time. He's got time. You got to be patient here. He's about a half the straightaway behind down the back straightaway. As McDowell tries to clear Ken Robinson and Jason Hughes. Bloomquist trying to get a record around Bloom Blankenship. Blankenship's going to go to the top now, Dustin. Let's see how this affects him. McDowell on the very inside of the racetrack. Going to try to work his way through the back of the field. Three laps remaining. McDowell got cars running side by side in front of him here with three to go. John Blankenship still about 10 car lengths behind your race leader. McDowell that last time by still turning the fastest laps on the racetrack. But as if we've seen anything can happen, James, two to go. 98 complete. And at turn number two, Dale McDowell. He gets around Mike Marler. That might win the race for him right there behind Francis. That may have done it. Dale McDowell. Out at turn number four for the biggest win of his career. One more lap to go, Dustin. Dale McDowell's got lap cars on the outside of him. Four of them to be exact. He's got the 17M glued to the bottom side of the racetrack. His biggest career payday, his biggest career win here at Eldora on the horizon. Checkered flag in the air from 22nd to 1st. Dale McDowell wins the Dirt Late Model Dream. Fans, he's out of the car, the Mac Daddy, Dale McDowell. <laughs> His crew makes it down. There's Shane, his brother's down here. Jesse, the entire gang, Sarah's down here. Everybody is celebrating big. Well, it was inside my left door. And it says, uh, I wrote this in silver for your hair color. 
If you win the dream, we'll get some gold markers so we can afford it. Kick ass, Austin Dillon. <laughs> you kicked ass tonight, sir. That's what you did. Can you believe it? 22nd to the lead. Did you ever think you could get it done? Heck no. Uh, you know, we, we didn't do well in the heat race. Uh, I'm just no damn good up on the cushion. Uh, that's just all there is to it. We keep trying to fix the car, fix, and, and it's not fixing me. But uh, in the middle of the racetrack, and they're late in the race, I could run top and bottom, and uh, didn't know where I needed to be. It's, this racetrack was flawless. You could race all over it. It's just you don't know. You can't feel the speed in the seat. So my brother Shane was down there giving me hand signals, and I was uh, trying to look for him and, and see what was going on. And, and uh, man, them last 15 laps, I, they just I looked up on the board, and I didn't think that was ever going to click off. But I thank goodness that I made it to victory lane. Uh, I won the world in 2005, but Shannon Baub actually won it. I just was the recipient of, of, of his misfortune. And uh, so it feels great to be able to, to celebrate here in Victory Lane. And thank all you race fans for coming out and supporting Dirt Lake Model Racing. If it wasn't for you guys, we couldn't do what we love. For those, thank you guys. Thank all you guys.